Oh, hey, welcome to the Atari VCS vlog. First time I'm doing one of these, it's going to be very off the cuff. I'm going to put my drink down. I'm drinking a uh, AL8, which is my favorite soda, by the way, which is made here in Kentucky. Just a little bit of a knowledge for you. L8 is awesome. It's like, a gin it's like a ginger type drink. I love it. Very good. This morning I'm uh, doing a vlog to talk about the VCS. The, the Atari VCS. What is it? It's this thing. This is the Atari VCS. I actually have it at the show today. Last time I did a video talking about the VCS, it was plugged up. I didn't feel like I'm plugging it. I got it right here. So you can actually look at my beautiful VCS. Black. Red on the back. And I have a flash drive for some extra storage. Um, now, I did a uh, turbo vlog back in November for Atari Week, where I talked about um, the VCS over the course of a year, what I thought of it at the time, and um, just sort of went on a little, little rant, you know, about everything. Uh, some of the stuff that I talked about in that vlog, um, some of the issues I had, what's hilarious, and you can check the comments for this, what's hilarious is that I swear, like a day or two after I posted that video, update. The console got an update. It fixed some of the issues I had. One of the biggest issues I had was the fact that I couldn't uh, uh, go back to the home screen uh, by pushing the Atari button on on one of the controllers. I had to like use my phone and stuff. It was really cumbersome. That's fixed. And a bunch of little improvements as well. So I thought I would do these regularly uh, because I don't really do turbo vlogs that much anymore. Um, honestly, they're kind of hard to come up with ideas for that aren't just like, hey, you want to see my Saturn games, you know? So, um, instead, I thought people really liked that video where I talked about my year with the VCS, so I figured maybe every three, four, five months, I would give you an update on what's going on with it, what I think of it, what games I've been playing. Um, so I did that video back in November. And this is the end of March. So, you know, it's had a bit of a time now. Um, the console library is still only at, uh, I think it's at 154 now, but that's also putting, that's, that's counting um, streaming services like uh, like Xbox uh, Cloud Gaming and uh, Antstream Arcade as games. So really you're looking at like, I'm trying to think of how many, there's like five streaming services. So really you're looking at like 149 games. Um, but, with that said, of course this is a mini PC, you can use this as a PC. I don't do that because I have a gaming laptop, I don't really need this thing for a PC. So I use this as the Atari OS console. And, um, maybe first we can, we can just talk about what I've been playing on it. Um, I don't, this isn't my primary console, I have other consoles like the Xbox Series S, the Steam Deck, uh, I play my Evercade a lot, I play, I've been, I've been really into my 3DS recently. So, this this console is nice to have, this mini PC console hybrid, is nice to have because I can pick up the VCS controller, turn it on, not with the controller, sadly, I just have to push the button on the back, but I can turn on the control, you know, the console, grab my controller, and play some easy pick up and play games, and not have to feel too invested like I do with other consoles. Um, so, recently, um, a really big one, probably the biggest one for me recently, has been I got back into playing Tempest 4000, which I actually, um, I think I still have a copy of that. Hold on. Scanning my shelf. Scanning my shelf. Yeah. Tempest 4000. I actually reviewed this copy years ago. But um, I have it on the VCS as well, which is nice to have on there uh, because obviously it's an Atari game and this is a, an, an Atari console thing. So it's nice to have it just kind of on the unit to play. And uh, playing it with, um, I actually found playing it with the joystick, I thought I would like that, because uh, you can use like the spinner. I actually don't care for it that much. I like using the regular, uh, uh, like modern controller, the, the Xbox stock controller more. But fantastic game, I still love Tempest 4000. Um, I did an editorial talking about that new LlamaSoft uh, collection thing that came out. That's really freaking cool. Um, so, yeah, definitely got me in the mood to playing more Tempest 4000, and that's what I've been doing over the last few months, is playing that. Um, so that, that, that was a big one. Another big one 
is actually not even a full game. It's a demo for a game called Poly Gunner, which is um, by, uh, man, I'm gonna forget the name already. Something Red Ninja something Studios. The, um, I talked about him last time on the, on the last vlog. Um, he made BPM Boy. Um, hold on, I can actually give you his name because he commented. Tony Barnes! There he is, Tony Barnes. Uh, and I, th I think his studio is Retro Ninja, but it's just him. I, last time I made the mistake of saying the team behind Desert Strike and stuff. The, the guy behind Desert Strike and, and, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer on Xbox. Um, the guy. <laughs> That's his studio. He made BPM Boy, which I, 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 I liked a lot. And... The new demo for Poly Gunner, the little sneak peek he put out, fantastic. It's a really cool, like, like top-down isometric shooter. Reminds me a lot of a game like Vindicators that I used to love playing, uh, an old-ass old arcade game. So, very excited to actually get the full release of that when it comes out. But I've been playing, I, I've, I've played through that sneak peek quite a few times now. Um, what else have I, have I been playing? Quamp 2 came out, and Quamp 2 is like... It's basically the story of what if the the ball from Pong went on an adventure, and it's so it's it's sort of like a I don't want to say Metroidvania, but it's sort of like a, a 2D adventure platformer kind of puzzle game. But you play as a ball and you bounce off of things. Very unique concept. I I'm not familiar with the original Quamp. Uh, I wish they would bring that to the VCS. Not familiar with the original Quamp. But Quamp 2 has been a ton of fun. The concept's super easy to understand. It's really addictive. And some of the boss fights are really creative. I think that's the one of the, the, the second boss fight was like I fought Warlords, like the game Warlords. Very cool, very cool game. Um, they've been releasing homebrews, which has been really nice. I like the fact that, that they've been dumping Atari homebrews on here. That's a really smart idea, especially for stop gaps if you don't have a bigger release coming out. That's, that's amazing. And um, one of the ones that came out recently was Crystal Quest uh, 7800, which is a pseudo-sequel to Crystal Castles, but it's, a, it's like a Mario-style 2D platformer. Um, and I, I don't know the name of the dev that made it, but it's it's been around for a while, but Atari officially released it, which is very cool. I have a bit of a story with this. So, I'm part of the VCS Discord. I don't really post a lot on there, just because I'm not, I'm not like a social media guy. I'm basically into like see updates and stuff. Um, but I was checking the updates one day to see, you know, they like post game announcements and stuff. And I saw that that was announced. And then it was immediately taken down. It was like the post was up and then it was gone. And I was like, huh, that was weird. Maybe they put it up early by accident. Huh. And I didn't see the game on the store. I was like, okay, whatever. So I went on, and um, I have a few friends on the VCS that I've met through the Discord server, and one of them I saw recently was playing Crystal Quest 7800. So I was like, huh, weird. I didn't see that on the store. So I clicked on it, and it came up for the purchase screen, and I was like, huh, and okay, I'll buy it. So I bought it, downloaded it, started playing it, immediately noticed there was no sound. And I probably should have done some research before I just bought it. Because apparently um, whatever chip the original cartridge used had had issues with the emulation. And they couldn't, the, the sound didn't work, so they took it off of the store. So people that got it when it first went up had, had a version with no sound. But for some reason, through this other guy's VCS profile, I was able to purchase the game with no sound. So I was like, well, damn, that sucks. And... <laughs> I, I bought it, and then quite literally a day later, they fixed it. They, like, updated it and put it back on the store. So, um, it's all good, but for, for, like, a day, I was like, oh, damn, I wasted my money. <laughs> and then, but now it's fine. Now I can actually play it and it has sound. It's great. So, Crystal Quest 1000 has been a great homebrew game, and I've been loving playing that. Um, and I'm trying to think of what other ones I really want to highlight, because I have a lot of games on here. I have, I think I have the majority of the library, there's a few that I still need to purchase that I haven't been as interested in, but like, where it's such a small library, I, 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 I probably will just buy all the games over time and have them, you know, because at some point, this thing is not going to exist anymore, and the games on, you know, it's all digital, the games on the store, 
while most of them are, are on other platforms, it, it'll be nice to have this with the games that were on the store and be like, hey, check it out. I have the VCS and the full library. So I probably will do that over time. Um, uh, recently, I've been playing uh, Cosmic Panic, which I've been playing by myself, but I want to play it with other people. Um, I haven't had a chance to do that yet because I got it like a couple days ago. And it's like a party game that's also part party like a uh, part arcade game it's like you have like six different arcade games to play with a four like up to four players and they're all very unique um and i really like the concept don't know how much don't know how how much longevity you can get out of the game uh i've played all six games a few times by myself because you can do that as well just like as arcade games and they're fun they're very simple but they're fun and i'm curious to see how that works in a party setting. I would love to see them revisit this concept with a sequel and maybe uh, flesh it out a little more, add, you know, there's six games now. I think if they had maybe, this might be asking too much, I'm thinking like 18, 20 games, you know, and they're all very short and simple. That would be perfect for a party setting. And then, you know, you could put it on party mode, put it on random shuffle, whatever you want to do, and bam. But six, I feel like six, even, even in a party setting, might get a little old quick. Uh, but it's a very cool game, though. The music's fantastic. I like the artwork for the game. Um, so, yeah, I have I can say I've been enjoying that. Um, and then I've been playing some other older games. Uh, recently, I've, I've almost finished uh, Sir Love A Lot, which is a um, Super Meat Boy-style game um, by Pixel Games, who also made Donut Dodo, which I reviewed on this channel, and I absolutely love Donut Dodo. Um, and they have another game coming out soon that I want to pick up, whatever it hits the VCS. But, sorry, a little lot's awesome. So yeah, I've been, I've been playing some pretty cool games on the VCS. Um, have my thoughts really changed since the last vlog on the console? Um, with the, the, there's been two system updates since. They've made some good integrations, um, like the fact that I can actually exit the games quickly easier. I can, I can now see how long I've been playing games, which has been interesting to me after playing this for a year. I can go back and say, oh man, I've played Atari 50 for 18 hours, you know? Um, so that's pretty cool. I like being able to do that. Um, and I never had any issues with the store, but I know there were some people that had issues with like a, a zip code issue at the store. That never affected me, so if that was fixed for other people, great. I so happy for them, <laughs> but I could always purchase the game, so I was never that upset about it. Um, I've been using this recently, so this is something you could do with the VCS, but I haven't done it till now. You can use it as a streaming box as well, which is like you go into the store, you, you download apps for different streaming platforms, and you use those to watch whatever you want to watch. I, I have so many other ways to do that, I didn't really mess with it. But recently, I've been watching The Simpsons on Disney Plus. And for some reason, the Disney Plus app, for like a week, just would not work on my Xbox, where I usually watch it. So I was looking for alternatives, and I was like, oh, I'll try my VCS. And it worked, because the VCS does it like through a browser. It worked just fine. I, I was able to go on and watch um, the Simpsons, but where this is like a mini PC, whenever I go into the service, I can only navigate it with my phone set up as a mouse and keyboard. Or if I had a mouse and keyboard, I'm sure I could do that too. But I can't use the controller in any way. So, um, and, that, and, and that goes for, I think, all of the streaming platforms except for Plex. I think Plex is the only one that like natively lets you use the controller for some reason. So, little confusing about, um, that because it, it seems like if you wanted to also sell this as a streaming box you would have integration to where even even if it goes through a browser maybe you could use your controller as a, a mouse you know to, to click on things and then bring up a virtual keyboard um i know that's something that can, you could easily integrate uh, because i have a steam deck and the steam deck does that all the damn time. Uh, when I go into the Linux side of things, or if I'm ever in a game and I need to do something like that, I can. I can it's easy to navigate. So, kind of wish they had that. But honestly, the streaming was pretty good. But I just had to use my phone to navigate it, which I mean, everyone has a phone, so I guess I guess that's not that big of an ask. 
It's just kind of annoying to me that I have to put down my controller or get out my phone. So, this isn't my streaming platform, though. I, like I said, I only used it because I couldn't access Disney on my Xbox. Um, I know there's some other games coming out soon. Um, the big one, I think, from Atari is Lunar Lander... Um, uh, I forget the name of the damn game already. Lo Lunar Lander something. A new Lunar Lander game. Beyond or something, I think. Um, so that one I'm definitely going to buy. Um, I recently picked up Food Fight Culinary Combat, which... I don't want to sound too negative to the game, because I think the game accomplishes what it wants to accomplish. It's basically a family-friendly shooter, sort of like Splatoon, but it's uh, based on food fight. So you're playing as kids, you're throw, throwing food-based weapons at each other and stuff. Um, but I thought it was a little shallow. Um, I haven't played that much of the online it is fun for when I when I have played a match or two, but I think the issue is that the VCS is a platform made up by people like me who like easy pick up and play Atari games, and maybe not people who play a lot of games online. So um, there is like a short, very very short, like hour long little campaign you can run through, and I, I did it. It was fine. I just kind of wish there was more content to that game. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't. I haven't really put too much time into it. Kind of, I was kind of let down. Uh, but there's been other people that that have been playing it online together and been having fun. So it's cool that that sort of a game is is available on the VCS. It's just I'm I'm such a big fan of the original Food Fight that I don't know. It's it's just kind of a game with the Food Fight license to me. Um, and recently, like last night, I got. I, I have ha I've had this game for a while, but last night I actually started playing it. Um, started playing some Neo Sprint, which is a isometric racer. It's part of the Sprint franchise that, that Atari used to have. And um, it's been fun. Uh, I've played a few of the, um, the campaign races, and I unlocked... Uh, there's a percentage counter, which this game's also been getting updates. And I unlocked 0.03% of the game. So, it seems like there's a lot of stuff to collect and do. And also there's a track uh, editor, and, th and then you can share tracks online and download other people's tracks and play them. So, like, that's cool. So that's probably one that I'm going to put more time into. And I actually, last night for the first time, I actually pl uh, hooked up my joystick and tried using the, uh, the the paddle steering for it. And it was pretty good. It was, it was fun. Um, so that's that's a really good multiplayer game. I think you, you can play up to eight players like locally on that game or something crazy like that. So uh, yeah, that was fun. So not not a lot has changed yet on my opinions. Um, there been, there have been improvements, so that's good. Um, you know, this is still a, a niche little collector's platform um, for Atari fans. Basically, if if you're not an Atari fan, I don't see you getting much out of this. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you think of me doing just VCS vlogs, um, and, and, you know, every four or five months updating you on what I've been playing and what I think about the console. Um, and, uh, yeah, this will be filed under Turbo Vlog on, on my playlist and on my channel page, uh, because I'm not making a whole new playlist for this, and I don't do Turbo Vlogs much anymore, so these are just basically Turbo Vlogs, but just focused on the VCS for now. Um, yeah, this thing is so fucking pretty. I love, I, I love the, 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 the look of this. It's, it's, it's so sleek looking. It's very cool.